How will Xi Jinping's fall happen? Xi Jinping is currently the most powerful man in China. Being very cautious of any possible coup from opposition, Xi Jinping decided to hold all the levers of power, with no checks and balances. He is the chairman of the Communist Party, chairman of the military, and president of China, among a host of other titles. There are many in the Western world, who wish to see Xi Jinping replaced by a moderate leader, or a reformist. They promote theories that Xi Jinping is struggling to hold on to power. But, most of these theories are not supported by any factual evidence. He seems to have a very tight grip on power, and there is no second-tier leader left in China, at this time. When Xi Jinping came to power in 2012, there were two major factions, one under the former CCP chairman Jiang Zemin, a left-wing sympathizer, who believed in tight control of the people, and the other under Hu Jintao, a technocrat, who was Xi Jinping's predecessor. Xi Jinping spent an entire 10 years to remove all the influence of Jiang, and successfully purged the Jiang faction to a large extent. By the 20th Party Congress in October 2022, Jiang's influence within the party has become insignificant. Xi Jinping seemed to be cordial with the Hu Jintao's faction, who were mostly reform-oriented leaders, and didn't seem to pose much of a threat. But, in October 2022, at the 20th Party Congress, Xi Jinping decided to remove two prominent members of the Hu Jintao faction, namely Li Keqiang and Wang Yang, from the powerful Politburo Standing Committee, as well as the Politburo itself. Along with them, Hu Chunhua, another prominent, young, and promising CCP leader, and the Vice Premier of the State Council, who was also part of the Hu Jintao's faction, was removed from the 24-member Politburo. With both the faction's members cleared out of the Politburo, and the more powerful Politburo Standing Committee, Xi Jinping filled them with his loyalists. This meant there is no real opposition to Xi Jinping currently. However, Xi Jinping seems to be always anxious about what's lurking around the corner. His zero-Covid policy, and other brutal crackdowns, are meant to keep the masses on a tight leash. In simple terms, currently, Xi Jinping is as powerful as Mao Zedong, in the history of communist China. If that's the case, how will Xi Jinping's fall happen? For any dictator to survive, he needs allies, who need to watch his back all the time. They need to be 100% loyal, who can't be bought by others for any price, as well as have the strength to quell any discontent brewing, down the chain. The question is, does Xi Jinping have such allies within his ranks? To know this, one needs to look at the history of communist China. Since October 1, 1949, when the communists took over China, there have been only five top leaders, who have ruled China, excluding the short reign of Huaga Feng, who was the chairman of the party, for about two years. Mao Zedong was the military leader, who won the civil war, and marched into Beijing with his army, called, the People's Liberation Army, or PLA. The PLA looked at him as their legitimate leader, who commanded great respect. Mao was credited for uniting the country, after the fall of the Qing dynasty, in 1911. Between 1911 till 1949, China had undergone several internal struggles, revolts ruled by the warlords, uprising, Japanese invasion, and civil wars. There was a general sense of admiration, fear, and gratitude towards Mao, for bringing back stability and unity to China. Mao annexed Inner Mongolia, and then East Turkestan, commonly known as Xinjiang today, and a decade later, Tibet, by force. These annexations and expansions only solidified Mao's glory. Mao was also the spiritual leader, since communism replaced any form of organized religion, within China. Mao's teachings, songs and sayings were repeated by millions of his followers, including school children, allowing Mao Zedong, to achieve a demigod status. In simple terms, Mao had a strong support from the party rank and file, despite many party leaders opposing him, from time to time. The opposition came from generals, and leaders, who fought the civil war with Mao. 
They were especially against Mao's program named, The Great Leap Forward, which produced widespread famine, and was responsible for the deaths of millions of ordinary Chinese. Mao never liked any opposition, despite knowing he was wrong. So, he removed these generals and leaders from power, and most of the time, they either disappeared, or were killed. Despite the pressure and opposition from some, Mao was able to hold together a bunch of loyalists, who were willing to guard him with their life, if necessary. Deng Xiaoping was the next leader who ruled China, for a period of about 14 years. Deng changed the course of China, from a closed socialist economy, to a market-driven economy, with state control. This allowed Deng to reach high value in a different way. Deng was also a strong military leader in his own right, during the civil war, and had won the admiration from many, including Mao. Deng was surrounded by many in his close ranks, who were against him, but Deng was careful to give some leeway for them to survive, and exercise their authority within their own sphere. Jiang Zemin, who succeeded Deng, was neither efficient, nor talented. But, he was very crafty, and he aligned with the party elders, who were hard leftists, who then were willing to protect him. Jiang also formed his own group of supporters, later came to be known as the Jiang faction. However, Jiang was only allowed to be in power for 10 years, as dictated by Deng, before his death. When the time came in 2002, for Jiang to peacefully transfer power to Hu Jintao, who was supposed to become his successor, Jiang refused and tried several tricks in his playbook. Though he lost in the battle to remain as chairman of the party, he figured a way to stay as the chairman of the military, viewed as a crucial position to control power. This left Hu Jintao very weak, and he had to remain in the shadow of Jiang Zemin, throughout his entire tenure. Xi Jinping was picked as a compromise candidate, between the Hu Jintao's faction, and Jiang Zemin's faction, since Xi Jinping appeared as soft, and can work with both factions. Jiang believed, that he can control Xi Jinping, the same way he controlled Hu Jintao. Xi Jinping has been a man of few words, and has displayed a mysterious image, at least on the outside. Despite his ruthlessness in going after his opponents, he has not been flamboyant, or charismatic. He does not garner the kind of reverence or respect, neither among the party leaders, nor the general public. Despite his attempts to copy the image-building techniques of Mao, Xi Jinping is no Mao Zedong. After his shuffle in the CCP leadership, Xi Jinping is surrounded by people, who are both weak, and less popular, than himself. Many of his generals in the military are his stooges, and don't deserve the position, which they've been given. In simple terms, his enormous success in garnering total control, both within the party, and the army, will be his undoing. Xi Jinping has purged more than 5 million CCP officials, during his tenure. There are many billionaires and business leaders, who have been imprisoned, and are languishing in jails for years. The Chinese economy is falling apart, and is headed towards a serious downturn. Xi Jinping has removed the reformists, who can guide him through this difficult period, and replaced them with inexperienced people, in the Politburo, for the simple reason, that they are his loyalists. Though there has been no serious revolt since the Tiananmen Square incident, in 1989, this was also due to the fact that the Chinese economy did amazingly well, letting the Chinese people focus on a sole mission, of building their wealth. China has kept its economy going strong, by printing the highest amount of money in the world, more than the United States, by a big margin, building unnecessary real estate all around the country, completing mega-projects, which has produced negative returns all through, and also wasting trillions on a bottomless pit, known as Belt and Road Initiative. Xi Jinping has followed a very belligerent, expansionist foreign policy, which has created a lot of countries turn against China, including most of its neighbors. Except for North Korea and Pakistan, there are really no reliable ally in the entire world for China. Xi Jinping has no options left to bring back the economy. 
He has modified the constitution endorsing a model of Marxism, called common prosperity, while also advocating a closed economy, and only involve external supply chains when absolutely necessary. This will affect the economy further, making more people lose their livelihood, and turn against him, in the coming years. The political environment is perfectly set for a mutiny, against Xi Jinping, not immediately, but at the opportune time. A small slip, a revolt somewhere, a flip by one of his subordinates, any of these could be the trigger, and Xi Jinping will be history. He has not groomed a successor, and so, there is nobody who can put all their chips on the table, to save him in the event of an uprising. When the tables turn against Xi Jinping, it will be so quick, that nobody will know what really happened, before it actually did. And that's how Xi Jinping will fall. Thanks for watching.